Have you heard of the Nintendo Switch? Apparently it has a lot of couch co-op games. So let's talk about them. All of them. And what I mean by that is all of the exclusive co-op games. I'm not gonna make a 20 hour video talking about every couch co-op game. That's ridiculous. We're just gonna talk about these in alphabetical order. First, let's start with the Wii U ports. We have Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. If you played this game, it's a great two-player co-op puzzle game. Originally on the Wii U, it was single player, but the Nintendo Switch added the capabilities to play as Toadette. There's also an assist mode where you can use a cursor to throw objects and assist player one. So there's lots of variety here, but playing as two actual Toads makes for a really great and equal co-op experience. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is another great Wii U port, although this one doesn't add a lot of extras outside of the Funky Kong mode, which is basically like an easy mode. I'm glad to see this hit the Nintendo Switch. It's an incredible 2D platformer. I'd love to see a third game come out soon. We also have Pikmin 3 Deluxe. The original Pikmin 3 did have a co-op mode on Wii U, but it wasn't the story mode. They were separate, collect treasure, battle enemies, and defeat bosses. They each had time limits and required players to work together to rack up the highest score possible. However, Pikmin 3 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch allows you to play the entire game in split screen co-op. And this honestly ends up being one of my favorite co-op experiences I've had in quite a while. I was addicted to this game when I first played it. So this is definitely a step up from the Wii version. The original Hyrule Warriors took the Dynasty Warriors formula and threw Zelda in it. The Wii U version allowed two-player co-op, where one player played on the gamepad and the other played on the TV. And this was a pretty cool concept. Of course, you can't translate that over to the Switch. You had to settle with split-screen co-op. I'm not going to complain. I'm a big fan of the Dynasty Warriors games, and I have a lot of nostalgia associated with them. So being able to play Zelda in this format is really fun. Super Mario 3D World is honestly one of the best co-op 3D platformers ever, and maybe the best co-op Mario game to date. The version that came to the Switch included Bowser's Fury, which we will talk about later, but this is a great game. I think everyone's familiar with it. New Super Mario Bros. U is another New Super Mario Bros. game. Obviously it originally came out on the Wii U, and that version had five player co-op where one player can use the gamepad to create blocks and stuff. So that is not included in the Switch version. You're limited to the four players, but it does add the ability to play as Toadette, who then powers up and turns into Peach, which is a nice addition. Okay, now we're gonna talk about co-op ports. Now these are games that aren't exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, but they do have exclusive co-op features. You're not gonna be able to utilize these features on other platforms. The first one I wanna talk about is Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. So this game is basically on every modern platform around, and it was known as a single player game where you control two characters at once. Well, in the Switch version, they actually let you split up the controls between two players, and it feels right at home. I love this game, and this ends up being another one of my all-time favorite co-op experiences. Cave Story. This is one of the most popular indie titles in modern gaming. It's a 2D platformer with some Metroidvania elements, but it's the Switch version that has exclusive co-op features. I want to see more Metroidvanias with co-op. Having these big worlds that you have to explore can be kind of lonely, so having a partner to run around with makes it a lot more enjoyable. Devil May Cry 3. So this originally came out on the PS2, and it had a secret co-op mode there, but now it's been re-released on modern platforms and the Nintendo Switch version. It's called Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. It has a local co-op mode called Bloody Palace, where one player controls Dante and the other controls Virgil. You work together to fight on 9,999 floors of the demon-filled tower. There are teleporters, so you can skip a lot of those floors. You don't have to play all of them. Anyways, I would love to see co-op in the story mode, but you know what? This is good too. There's a game I just learned about called Ink. 
and it's a precision platformer where you use color to fill in the invisible world. Basically, you splat ink all over the environment and that's how you figure out where you need to jump. The Nintendo Switch has an exclusive co-op mode where you can play through the whole game with a friend. I just learned about this game and it's really solid. No Straight Roads is a story-based co-op game where you play as two characters in a rock band and you have to take down some corporate bad guys that, I don't know, the story doesn't matter. But there's a lot of music and rhythm-based sections. It's actually really fun to play in co-op. Every version has co-op, but it's the Switch version that has an exclusive three-player co-op mode where a third player can jump in and be an assist player. So I wanted to mention that one. Part-Time UFO originally came out on iOS and then was ported to the Nintendo Switch and it includes a co-op mode. This plays kind of like one of those claw grabbing arcade games where you reach down and you grab a toy and bring it back. But in this version, you each control different parts and you have to sometimes stack cheerleaders. There's various different puzzles you need to solve and you work together and navigate through the puzzles. This one's definitely a hidden gem. The World Ends With You originally came out on the Nintendo DS, and the Switch version adds a co-op feature. Although this game, I had a hard time with it. The controls aren't great. You use a lot of motion controls, and you gotta point the cursor using your Joy-Con to do a lot of the combat. It's It doesn't really work that well, but I'm glad it exists. A lot of people love this game. I need to give it a little bit more time. Ultra Street Fighter 2 is another great version of Street Fighter 2. And the Switch version allows for a co-op mode where you can team up with a friend and do two-on-one fights. Not a lot of fighting games offer this, and I really enjoyed it. VVVVVV is another classic indie game. It's a precision platformer where you use gravity to jump between the ceiling and the ground over and over to get through the environment. This one's incredibly difficult, and playing it in co-op, you better have a good partner. Otherwise, it might not work out for you. Now we're going to start talking about all of the Nintendo Switch exclusives that have couch co-op. Let's start with Alicia, Oblivion of Twin Goddesses. So this one doesn't actually have couch co-op. Sorry, it has a system link mode, but you can't play it online. You actually have to be sitting in the same room with two Nintendo Switches. One person plays in handheld and one plays on the screen. So it might as well be local. I just wanted to mention it. I love the co-op concept here. I love that you have to work together and I love the idea of one person using the Switch. It's just a unique and inventive idea. Unfortunately, the execution isn't the greatest. The game is pretty slow. A lot of the puzzles are really obtuse and the game is unrefined. However, I still think that there's some fun to be had. The art style is really appealing and the co-op mechanics can still be fun. I need to spend some more time with this one for sure. Animal Crossing New Horizon, the game that pretty much everyone played during COVID apparently. It's known as an online experience primarily, but did you know that there's a four player local co-op mode as well? It's kind of limited as your friends can't exactly interact with a whole lot. They mostly can help you pick items up and just walk around and follow you. So yeah, it's not ideal, but it might be fun to play with a kid. Astral Chain is an action game that was made by Platinum Games. This game has all sorts of crazy anime bullshit story. So, so if you're into that sort of thing, you'll probably like it. The co-op mode is kind of an assist mode where the second player controls the Legion and they are attached with this chain to the first player. The controls take some getting used to, but once you figure that out, this is actually pretty fun. And it's just great to see a story-based game with some co-op. ARMS is one of the early Nintendo Switch releases. You can't play through the story mode in co-op, but there are a number of team-based challenges that you can play with a friend in split screen. ARMS is a really unique fighting game. You can play with Joy-Cons using motion controls or with a traditional controller. Now that I'm making this, I should probably go back and play this some more. Battle Cats Unite originally came out on the iOS and Android. You can work together in two-player co-op mode to bring out the best in your character. You basically play various mini games and control an army of cats. Okay, Bayonetta Origins is not an official co-op game. I just wanted to mention it because if you didn't know, 
you can play it with two Joy-Cons, as each character is assigned to half of a controller. But if you split up the two Joy-Cons, you can play it similar to Brothers, where one player will be controlling a character and the other controls another one with their Joy-Con. And it actually works very seamless. So maybe you want to try that. I know it's not a real co-op game, but I've had a lot of fun playing it this way with my daughter. Okay, so Bowser's Fury is the game that came out with Mario 3D World. This is only on the Nintendo Switch. It's like an open world 3D Mario game where you collect stuff and then you have these boss fights with Bowser. A second player can be a helper playing as Bowser Jr. Unfortunately, I think this is one of the worst co-op experiences I've had on the Switch as Bowser Jr. is pretty much useless outside of attacking random enemies and picking up items. He can't really do much and he ends up just getting lost in the dust as Mario navigates the world. He can't do anything during the Bowser fights. So if you're gonna play this as a co-op game, I would just, uh, I would avoid it but it is a really solid game otherwise. Burger Time Party takes the classic arcade game Burger Time and puts a fresh coat of paint on it and makes it four player co-op. Yes, this definitely looks like a budget title, but it can be really fun when you get a good team together. Cadence of Hyrule takes the gameplay of Crypt of the Necro Dancer and throws Zelda characters into it. This has an incredible soundtrack. This one can be difficult to get the hang of as you have to be moving on the beat at all times. Otherwise, you're not gonna really get anywhere. I had a hard time with it, but I do enjoy it. Demon Throttle is a game that came out exclusively as a physical game on the Nintendo Switch. So there's no digital version whatsoever. This one's definitely a hidden gem. It plays like an 8-bit style run and gun shooter with some RPG elements. This one is very difficult but it's really rewarding if you get into the groove and actually make some progress. All the bosses are great, with patterns that you have to learn and figure out, just like an old NES game. One of the latest games on this list is Disney Illusion Island. So this takes some of the inspiration from Mickey Mouse Illusion games like Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion, and it modernizes it with brand new hand-drawn art and four-player co-op gameplay. This is kind of like a Metroidvania, but there's no combat. You'll do a lot of exploration, dodging enemies, and learning new abilities to reach new areas. I've had a lot of fun playing this with my daughter, and honestly, it's one of my favorite couch co-op games to come out in 2023. Disney Sum Sum Festival is not unlike Mario Party, but with Disney characters. You just go around and you play mini games, and a lot of them you can actually play co-op. I don't know what else to say about this game. It's definitely aimed towards children. Fire Emblem Warriors is another game that takes the Dynasty Warriors format and throws Fire Emblem characters in it. And you could play it in split screen co-op. Basically, if you like Dynasty Warriors, you're gonna like this one. And then there's the follow-up, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, which is just more of the same. And continuing with that theme, we also had Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which is the sequel to Hyrule Warriors. But this one is also a prequel to Breath of the Wild, using the same art style and story. The lore here goes really deep, and if you love Breath of the Wild like most Switch owners do, it's really fun to play through this co-op and just learn the backstory of that game. It actually ended up being one of my favorite co-op games on the Switch. So even if you're kind of sick of the Dynasty Warriors type of gameplay, play this just for the story. It's excellent. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is the first Kirby game that went fully 3D. This is one of my favorite games from 2022. The second player can play as Waddle Dee, who is somewhat of an assist character, so he's not gonna be able to gain power-ups like Kirby. He doesn't have the copy ability, but if you have a really great co-op partner, he's gonna come in handy, especially during boss fights. Kirby's Return to Dream Land originally came out on the Nintendo Wii, but the Switch version is a full remake with updated graphics, and a lot of updated gameplay as well. There's a whole extra game added on here called Megalore Epilogue, but I'll get to that later. This is an excellent four-player co-op platformer. Kirby Star Allies is another amazing four-player co-op platformer. I know a lot of people that were kind of disappointed in this game, but honestly, stick through to the end because this has one of the best end boss sequences of any Kirby game ever. I love it. 
Then we have Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, which are basically remakes of Pokemon Red and Blue and Yellow. The second player outside of battles doesn't really do a whole lot but run around but I really found it to be enjoyable to team up and fight against other trainers and catching Pokemon. Not everyone's gonna love this game as a co-op experience, but I do. Luigi's Mansion 3 is another great co-op experience where the second player plays as Gooigi. I don't know, that that is kind of lame. I don't know why they couldn't have just thrown in a real Mario character like Mario or Toad or Daisy or whatever. Gooigi, yeah, that's... That's stupid, but regardless, this is an excellent co-op experience. You really have to work together. And if you're looking for some light horror Halloween themed games that you can actually play with your kids, this is the perfect game for that. As mentioned before, Megalore Epilogue, the interdimensional traveler, is a bonus game that came with Kirby Return to Dreamland. This is another game that you can play in four player co-op. This feels like a complete experience. It's not super long, but it feels like it could have been a standalone game. So it plays similar to Kirby, but it changes things up a little bit as well. You can defeat enemies and gain magic points, which can then be used to upgrade Magalore's magical abilities. This one I was pleasantly surprised with. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle has a co-op mode where you can play through various maps with a friend. And when you think of turn-based RPG type games or strategy games, you don't necessarily think of co-op. But this one was implemented really well. I just wish that you could play through the whole game co-op. Mario Party Superstars is more Mario Party. It has this really great co-op mode called River Survival Mode. You all get into a raft and you use your Joy-Cons to physically row the boat. Yeah, it's gimmicky, but I actually had a lot of fun doing this with my kid. And as you go down the river, you choose different paths and on your way you play mini games. This works incredibly well as a co-op experience. Mario Strikers Battle League. So this is just Mario playing soccer or football if you're uh, anywhere else in the world apparently. And yeah, you can play with up to four people on the same team against other teams. So yeah, that could be fun. I don't know what else to say. And then Mario Tennis Aces. You can play doubles where you just team up against the computer, but then there's also this really fun boss mode where you team up with a friend and you use tennis balls to actually fight bosses. I think that one was a pretty cool new addition to the Mario Tennis franchise. Another upcoming game that was just announced at the time of recording this is Mario vs Donkey Kong. This is a remake of the original Game Boy Advance game which basically takes the original Donkey Kong gameplay, but throws in puzzle mechanics. You have to navigate through the world and grab keys to unlock areas and try to save Pauline. But this version adds co-op, where a second player can play as Toad. I'm really excited to try this game out. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. You remember the X-Men Legends games? Well, then there was the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, which took the same dungeon crawling gameplay and threw basically every Marvel character known to man in it. And yeah, this is just more of that. So if you like dungeon crawler games or Marvel characters, this might just be the game for you to play. So Pikmin 4 does have a co-op mode, but it is very disappointing, especially if you played Pikmin 3 Deluxe. You can no longer play through the game in split screen co-op. Now you have to play it with an assist player. And basically that player can just throw rocks and stuff like that. It's not equal. I'm glad that it exists, I guess. Puzzle Bobble, every bubble. So this is basically bust a move. You can play it in four player co-op. If you haven't played Puzzle Bobble, basically you just shoot little balls and you match the colors and then they disappear. And think of that and then add three more players because that's all it is. But this is done really well and Again, I'm just glad to see old franchises continuing to grow and evolve and add co-op features, so this one's great. Snipper Clips is one of the early Nintendo Switch games, and it's still one of the best co-op experiences on the system. It's a puzzle game where you and a friend work together, cutting yourselves into various shapes to solve puzzles or to literally turn into puzzle pieces to fit into a puzzle. There's also a four-player co-op mode in this one. This is absolutely one of the best co-op experiences on the Switch. 
Snow Bros Special is a game that came out, I think in 2022. Snow Bros plays a lot like Bubble Bobble, but instead of bubbles, you're throwing snowballs. This one takes a lot of inspiration from the arcade game as opposed to the NES game. There are 100 levels, every 10 levels you fight a boss. This is another one that looks like it could be somewhat of a budget title, and it's not the deepest co-op experience, but there still can be a lot of fun if you want to have a, just a quick pick up and play. Super Mario Bros. Wonder. At the time of recording this, this game has not come out yet, but I still felt like I needed to mention it. To me, this looks like another new Super Mario Bros. game, but with better art style and potentially better gameplay. Those games, as much as I love them, started to get a little bit bland, so I'm glad to just see some creativity back in the 2D Mario space. I can't wait to play this game. And I'm so glad that they finally added Peach and Daisy, and it looks like Yoshi as well, as playable characters. My daughter is going to be very happy about being Peach in one of these games. Super Mario Maker 2. Unfortunately, you can't play through the story mode co-op on this one, but you can play through any fan-made level with a friend, up to four players. So there is the potential to have an unlimited amount of levels to play. So if you get bored of the official Mario games, you can always come to this game and see what kind of weird sh** the Mario fan base put together. Super Mario Odyssey. To me, this is the best 3D Mario game ever. And the addition of the co-op mode where player two can play as Cappy is implemented really well. I know most people aren't really fans of assist modes in co-op games, but to me, I think this is the best example of that working really well. Seeing as Cappy is somewhat attached to Mario, you don't have the problem where Mario just runs off and the assist character is kind of just left in the dust, similar to Bowser's Fury. And Cappy can be really helpful, whether it's attacking enemies or helping Mario jump to a higher platform or just attacking the bosses while Mario focuses on dodging. I think if you have a good second player, this can be an excellent co-op experience. But it's also a great co-op game to play with your kids as Cappy can't really screw things up too bad. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Not necessarily known as a co-op game, but there are co-op sections in the game. There's a mode called Spirit Board, where you can play with up to four players co-op. Basically, each player, you can choose whatever character you want out of the dozens of fighters, and you take on various challenges. You can also play co-op in Classic Mode, where players work together to complete a series of battles. Vitamin Connection is a really great indie game that was created by Way Forward. This has to be the best utilization of the Joy-Cons. You really have to work together. You'll rotate the Joy-Cons to control the ship and play various mini games using it to rotate or move up and down. Basically, this is the best way I've seen motion controls or just the Joy-Con functionality used in any game. I love this game and the soundtrack is pretty fun and upbeat as well. WarioWare Get It Together is an excellent, fast-paced, co-op minigame experience. Basically, you're just playing a bunch of micro games and you don't really have time to adjust or really learn how they go. You just have to wing it and just do your best. And playing this with a friend can be a really chaotic and fun experience. WarioWare Move It is another WarioWare game that hasn't come out yet, but this seems to be more of the same. So if you like fun and humorous mini games, you'll probably enjoy this one. And yeah, you could play it in co-op. Yoshi's Crafted World is an excellent two-player co-op platformer. I love the visuals here. I don't know if I like it as much as Yoshi's Woolly World. It has the same solid 2D platforming. This is a game that a lot of people criticize for being a little, a little too childish and not enough challenge. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at video games, but it was plenty challenging for me. Now we're gonna talk about some of the co-op games that only came out digitally. Box Boy and Box Girl. This is the first game in the series to feature co-op, and it works really well. It's a 2D co-op puzzle platformer where you use boxes, basically build steps and ladders to navigate through the various obstacles. You have a limited amount of blocks between both characters, so communicating and figuring out who needs to put what where in order to get past an obstacle is what makes this a really great experience. Good Job is one of my favorite co-op games on the Nintendo Switch. You basically just do various office tasks. 
You can do it in a precise and clean manner, but the fun way is to just take big swings and destroy the entire environment around you. Sometimes it's plugging in a printer, sometimes it's gathering people to bring them into the, into the meeting room. Whatever it is, there's no one way of accomplishing the task. So basically, you just take whatever items you can and force your way to the goal. Such a unique and fun experience, especially with a friend. God of Protectors is a game that I just found out about while making this video. It has a really great pixel art style. It's almost like a dungeon crawler. It gets really chaotic with tons of enemies on the screen at once. You could play it with up to four players co-op. This is definitely a Nintendo Switch hidden gem and it can only be found on the eShop. And then we have Super Kirby Clash. This is a free game that was only released on the eShop and you could play with up to four players. Basically, you just fight bosses and they throw in some RPG elements. Of course, there's some pay to win opportunities as well if you want to level up faster, but it's not necessary. Just take your time, fight the bosses, level up, get points, buy stuff. That's all you need to do. If you enjoy Kirby gameplay, this is more of that. And now the final game we're talking about on this list is called The Stretchers. This is another really great co-op experience. Honestly, this game is made to be played with a partner. It's really fun and lighthearted. You and a friend, you work together to drive an ambulance and pick up uh, victims of various assaults and other injuries, and you carry them in a stretcher. Each player controls one side of the stretcher and you have to slowly navigate around obstacles and then you throw their ass into the ambulance. Each level has a number of survivors or victims or whatever you want to call them that you need to pick up and move around. It's not ever a straight shot. Sometimes you got to use a trampoline, sometimes you got to throw them onto a conveyor belt. Whatever it is, it's always fun. And you can break up the puzzle solving and excitement by just doing some clapping or singing. I don't know why that's in the game, but you bet your ass I did that way too much. Okay, so those are all of the couch co-op Nintendo Switch games that are exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. If there are any that I missed, let me know. I think I got them all though. Remember, I'm only talking about the exclusives, so you don't need to bring up It Takes Two, all right? That was on everything. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you go ahead and watch our co-op hidden gems on Nintendo Switch. We talk about a number of the games that I just mentioned, as well as some other games that were on other platforms as well. And be sure to subscribe if you like couch co-op gaming. That's all we talk about here. Thank you for watching.